this is this is another uh, the, uh, uh, the, that I would like to show you. This uh, the source is Forbes magazine. It's a magazine for rich people. So it's it's in Portuguese. Sorry for that. So the sixty two richer people in the world. Okay, okay. Uh, they are. Uh, uh, this is red. This is the 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 the, the wealth of just 62 people in the road. And this is in green, this is the wealth of the 50% of the population, the poorest population in the road. Now they have the same, just 62 people, they have the same of 50% of the road's poorest population. So I, I, I show it this to you because this is the picture that uh, the road is right now. And uh, we need to understand this, and we need now to discuss how to change this, what we need to do to change this, this picture, what, what we need to do, to do to decrease poverty, what we need to do to decrease inequality in the road. So uh, I believe that most of you <laughs> were not born yet, but uh, in, 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 in last century, in 1995, uh, the world started to discuss a, a joint uh, uh, goal uh, to, uh, because we, we, we have the United Nations created, but we never use it to organize joint goals for the world. So they started to discuss Okay, last century in 1992, they started to discuss that should be interesting to create the Millennium Development Goals. What is this? It was uh, goals created uh, for the world uh, to try to achieve from the year 2000 to the year 2015. So uh, the, the Millennium Development Goals were established by the United Nations, but established doesn't mean that United Nations created. No, it was created by scholars, by universities, by all the people that work. They, they use it to attend the meetings and to discuss what are the eight principal goals for the world. So with the support of one, 191 nations in the world, all of them, they signed the Millennium Development Goals. For the first time, we put this uh, first uh, goal, eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, achieve universal primary education. One of the most important goals for the first time uh, uh, it was mentioned, uh, promote gender equality and empower women. This is so much important and never was mentioned. It was something uh, really revolutionary at that time to mention that we cannot have a fair world without the participation and without empowering women. Why? Because women, first, they are uh, uh, the majority in the world are women, and they are the leaders of families. We need to understand this. Even in Africa, in Brazil, I believe in India, women, they lead, they take the leadership of the wealth of the families. Uh, here in Brazil, we have a social policy called Bolsa Familia, where the card belongs to the women, the mother. She is, uh, that takes the card. Why not the father, the man? Because um, we made some research in the past. The men, they don't put the family first. The women, they put family first. And this is real. If you don't agree, try to make a research in wherever you live to see this. In Brazil, India, United States, China, women just always put family first. Unfortunately, men didn't understand this yet. I believe that we are, we are trying to change. But uh, as I mentioned, eight goals. 
and it was revolutionary for that time. And at the end, in 2015, the road achieved most of these goals. So it was a huge success. And what happened in, uh, when we were in almost in 2015, in 2020, here in Brazil, in Rio, we, we, we had an event with more than almost 200 UN members, countries, they came to Brazil. I attended this event. It was in 2012. And to discuss the continuity of this Millennium Development Goals the MDG, and we created, uh, the world created the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, with 17 SDGs, 17 goals, or, 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 so more than the, the, the eight goals that we had in the MDGs, with 169 uh, uh, goals, and it's important to, 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 to show that uh, almost 7 million people in the planet worked to create this 17 SDGs. So it was not created, it's important to say, it was not created by United Nations. The United Nations just organized the discussion, but it was created by a lot of people, more than 7 million people uh, 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 participated in the creation of these 17 de sustainable development goals. Uh, some exercise that I like to do is to ask for people to think about uh, the world that they would like to live in uh, 2030, 2030, and uh, something that it's not under this 17 uh, goals. I believe that everything that you think could be in this road is under this 17 uh, goals. If you think about something that it's not under this 17 goals, it's because it's not important for the road. Um, I'd like to mention one, okay, that uh, some countries they are doing. They are increasing, the countries they are increasing the, produce, uh, the, the production of uh, weapons and military uh, expenditures. I don't know uh, what this could be uh, good for the world. And you cannot uh, find this under these 17 goals. The 17 goals, we have no poverty, no hunger, good health, the quality of education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, energy, good jobs, climate action, everything that we need to have a better world in 2030. Uh, from MDGs, the eight MDGs that was created in 2000, to these MDG, the SDGs that was created in 2015, the great uh, uh, the difference is that now it's a, a more uh, 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 sustainable and it's important for the whole world. The MDGs, they face it just the uh, uh, non-development countries just the non-development countries they use it to have uh, uh, at that time goals now all the countries in the world they have uh, measures to achieve the sdgs here in brazil we can enter in a, in a, in a web page and and follow what brazil is doing and to achieve the sdgs in each area in the goals that brazil decided to do i believe that india has the same Okay, you can, you, you can follow uh, what India is doing to achieve the SDGs. So SDGs, now we need to find, to, 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 to discuss dignity. And dignity is end poverty and fight inequality. If we don't end poverty, we, if we don't fight inequality, we will never achieve dignity. We need to, uh, uh, focus on people to ensure healthy lives, knowledge, inclusion of women and children. 
people, they are the most important asset that we have in planet. If you don't uh, use to take care of people, why we are living in this planet? We are living this to be happy and to have people happy, everybody, not just few. We need to have everybody living in peace and happy. So we need, of course, to, uh, our house is the planet. We, well, we all live in the same planet. We don't have planet B. Even these billionaires trying to go to other planets, I don't see this. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, and even they can uh, construct some rockets, they can take uh, 100 people, 200 people to other uh, uh, planets, not all the 7.8 billion people in the flower uh, planet Earth. I think that what we need to do is to invest to save and protect our ecosystems, to protect our planet, for our children, for our grandsons. So we need to think about it. And it's possible to do this. So it's, it's important to understand that it's possible when we work in partnership. And of course, we need to promote safe and peaceful societies and strong institutions. The institutions, they are the pillars of our societies. So we need always to... Uh, uh, beside all this uh, that I mentioned, you have the goals that we need to achieve to have everything that I mentioned. So what to do, what we need to do to end the road of poverty? Uh, I, I strongly believe that uh, nowadays, first, the road is not on track okay, to meet uh, food and nutrition securities. And nowadays we have more than 3 billion people, 3 billion people, it's almost the half population of the planet that cannot afford the price of a healthy diet. We have 811 million people that suffer from chronic, chronic hunger, an increase of uh, nearly uh, 180 million in five years. So this last five years was a total disaster for, for the road. We increased the number uh, uh, with chronic hunger. We have nowadays 144 million children under the age of five that are stunted. 47 million are debilitated and 38% of these, they are overweight. It's another measure of debilitated, of stunted. Sometimes we think that a person that is fat or overweight, they are uh, uh, with a good nutrition. No, they are not with a good nutrition. Okay, nowadays we know that. So they are, they are, they, they are a health problem. They have a health problem. So, uh, nowadays, and the problem is that a healthy diet is five times more expensive than a diet uh, sufficient in ener energy like uh, calories, and 60% more expensive than a diet sufficient and in nutrients. So uh, this is a problem that we, we are facing. So uh, uh, now we have to focus in efficient agri-food systems. What is this? Uh, we need to create systems of agri-food that uh, can uh, be 
permanently sustainable and can sustain the needs of the people. So all around the world. So here in Brazil, we need to invest in smallholder farmers production because they are the most part of population. Worldwide, 1 billion, this is numbers that I would like to bring to you. 1 billion people, 1 billion people in the world, they are in employed in the production, harvesting, services, processing, and distribution of agri-food agri systems. And on other 3.5 billion, they earn their living through them. So 1 billion produce food, and 3.5, they work in the market of food. So 4.5 billion, more than half of the population, they are uh, 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 linked to agri-food systems. So nowadays, more than 85, 80% of the poor, they live in rural areas. And of these 75%, they earn part of the living with agri-food systems. If we want to end hunger and end extreme poverty, we need to invest in efficient agri-food systems all around the world. Uh, this, this is a, a table that I created to show you, okay, and this is the source, anyone can go there and, sh and, and see if I, uh, uh, to show uh, with more details what I'm saying. So, this is showing the numbers. So, we have um, almost 4.5 billion people living with direct jobs and livelihoods directly uh, uh, engaged with agri-food systems. Um, so uh, it's important to understand that the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, he said that uh, the road uh, is waging a war against nature. Uh, it's important to mention this because uh, if you want to create sustainable food systems, we need to take care of our nature because the earth will <laughs> create the, 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 the fruits and vegetables that we need to eat. Nowadays, what's happening? The biodiversity is collapsing. One million species are at risk of extinction, okay? Ecosystems, they are disappearing before our eyes. Deserts are spreading, wetlands are being lost. Every year we lose 10 million hectares of forests. Here in Brazil, the, the, our rainforest Amazon, every year we are decreasing the rainforest in Brazil. In 2019, carbon dioxide levels reached 148% of pre-industrial levels. Today we are reaching, sorry, today we've reached 1.2 degrees Celsius warming. And uh, you know, I, I, I read yesterday that in India, you have uh, some regions that are facing 47 degrees Celsius every day. <laughs> it, it, it's, 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 it's not sustainable to continue like that because each year is getting worse. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. So uh, we are heading towards a thunderous temperature raise of three to five degrees Celsius in this century. So we need to take care of our environment if we want to save our, our, our planet and to er eradicate uh, uh, extreme poverty. So what's the investment needed, what we need to create the sustainable uh, food systems? What we need to, uh, to, to take care of our environment. How much this is uh, this cost? Okay, let's discuss in terms of economic costs. Um, the, the, the United Nations, they, they did uh, 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 um, a, 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 a research uh, some years ago uh, just to discuss uh, what to do uh, to protect the planet and to create and to, uh, uh, these sustainable food systems around the planet. So they uh, got the number, okay, the impressive number 
of $267 billion of investment per year where should, would be needed to, for investments in rural and urban areas and in social protection. So this amount is not to give food. It's not to give food to the people, no. It's to uh, give uh, conditions and sustainability for them to produce and to live uh, outside of extreme poverty. So it's an investment for them. It's important to, see, to say that. It's not to give food and to feed the people. This is a number of investment to uh, try to take people out of this uh, uh, below of uh, the extreme uh, line to get them inside of uh, a citizenship. So, uh, this money is would be enabled for more supply for the poor, job creation, financing for a small business, uh, improvement of in their livelihoods, the rural and agrarian development for different actions. Okay, two hundred sixty-seven billion dollars. And you can say, okay, so this is uh, very sad because we will never have an investment, a road investment of $267 billion to, to, to take people out of extreme poverty. So I can show you that it's possible. The world GDP nowadays is $93 trillion, trillion dollars a year, okay? The world military expenditures is now $2.1 trillion. The US, just US is $800 billion a year that they invest in military expenditures. So to end hunger and poverty would cost 2.8% of world GDP and around 12.7% of military expenditures. If today all the world in the United Nations, they say, I will use 10% of my military expenditures to save lives and to change lives around the world, we would uh, and extreme poverty and hunger in the world. The problem is that we don't have political will. We don't have this will from our uh, leaders to change the picture of the planet. So it's possible to change, to, to end hunger and extreme poverty in, in, in the world. What we need to do is develop inclusive and sustainable value chains ensure investment in agriculture, the industrialization with social, economic, environment, environmental impacts. We need to combine uh, the capacities of local and regional actors in analysis, in, in, in technical assistance, in policy dialogue, investment promotion. So what we need, we need to focus Okay, but to have our governments focus to nourish our people, to boost the national based solutions, to advance equitable livelihoods, decent work, and empower communities, build resilience to vulnerabilities, shocks, and stresses, and accelerating the means of implementation. And uh, uh, I, I strongly uh, believe that, sorry, uh, so it's possible. We need to decrease inequalities, achieving the SDG 10. We need to improve education quality because to decrease inequalities, we need to improve education. We need to invest in education. All the countries that uh, uh, brought this uh, poverty line, they invested uh, high levels of their, of their budget in education. Uh, so we need to invest in education. And of course, we need to achieve the SDG2, we need to invest in zero hunger and sustainable uh, agriculture systems. I would like just to finalize to mention this. It was published in Financial Times. This is an Indian uh, uh, philosophy, I believe, or writer. Uh, her name is Arunda T. Roy. See, uh, it, of course, it's, it's, it's a very long, uh, 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 publishing that she made in Financial Times. The name is Pandemic is a Portal. But I, I would mention just uh, this, uh, what, what, what she wrote. It's a very, very interesting for, uh, she said, coronavirus has made the mighty new and brought the road to a halt 
like nothing else could. Our minds are still racing back and forth, longing for a return to normality, trying to stitch our future to our past and refusing to acknowledge the rupture. But the rupture exists. And in the midst of this terrible despair, it offers us a chance to rethink the doomsday machine we have built for ourselves. Nothing could be worse than a return to normality. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their road anew. This one is no different. It's a portal, a gateway between one road and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another road and ready to fight for it. So I would finalize saying that I would fight, I will fight for a better world. I think a better world is possible. I think that we need to continue living. If we uh, give up of our world, we are all dead. And I will uh, fight until my last minute in this planet Earth. How about you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really a great perspective, uh, great uh, lecture from the perspective of a reformer and educationist, economist, and uh, uh, this is really in, uh, enlightening and uh, very close to the uh, system that we live in and uh, very close to the, uh, it's a topic of from their curriculum, from our students' curriculum, as you have seen the curriculum. So we do also study all these poverty, types of poverty, poverty line, why and how this can be uh, changed the scenario. So your lecture, I can say, is very pertinent for the students. So I would like to uh, take a few questions. If uh, you have any question, please uh, use the chat box or you can unmute yourself or ask. One question that I have got in chat box that, uh, uh, if I'm wrong, not wrong, you have only talked about absolute poverty using the poverty but, line. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the poverty, the poverty line. It's important to say because even using the dollar, okay, the dollar here in Brazil can purchase some uh, goods that we cannot purchase like in a country uh, like Mozambique in Africa or in a country like India or China, the same amount of dollar. That's why we need to calculate the level of purchase that you can purchase, the goods that you can purchase with this, that same amount of money. That's why this line of poverty is different uh, among the countries, because one dollar here in Brazil is different from one dollar in Mozambique, and one dollar like like I was in in Republic Democratic Republic of Congo, you can purchase a lot of things with one dollar there, uh, but here in Brazil you cannot. In India the same, so uh, we we cannot use the same amount. You 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 need to recalculate the line in which they can, because in some countries. The purchase of food is very expensive than other countries because they don't have, okay, uh, the capacity of uh, uh, having this food in the country. Brazil is a country that, is, as I mentioned, uh, we have a lot of food. We produce food. We export food to, to China, to several countries. Uh, so we have enough food in the country for the people. So the food here in Brazil is not so expensive like a country, like nowadays with the conflict in, in Russia and, and Ukraine, the cost of food in Africa increased so much because most of the food they use it to have, use it to come from Ukraine and Russia in the north of Africa. And now they don't have anymore this, this food. So increase the price of food. So this is another problem that we are facing. Yes, sir. But my question is that, that as you have mentioned, that purchasing 
capacity is different in different countries. So based on this purchasing power parity that we um, can, uh, we used to measure the relative poverty. It's not about the uh, people who are living below or above the poverty line, but it is about the relative purchasing capacity of the people. So it uh, takes into account the concept of relative poverty. Exactly, we are completely right. Exactly, uh, uh, maybe I, I was not so clear, but exactly no, no. what you said. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Shupratim Karmakar, one of my colleagues, has raised hand. So, Shupratim, you want to say something? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, as uh, Dr. Mukherjee said, that when we measure the relative poverty, uh, sir, uh, what what is your opinion on the when we are measuring the relative poverty you know there is a sense of you know deprivation that is one very important angle of relative poverty which cannot uh, i think which is not absolute uh, very aptly measured when we are talking about the absolute poverty so what about that aspect that the sense of deprivation the people have from different strata of the society whether they have any kind of sense of deprivation and so uh, throughout the world, uh, as we can see that, uh, you know, the concept of poverty uh, can be, you know, very much gender specific. So do you, uh, I, I just want to know your opinion that how uh, it is uh, across the gender, how poverty is, you know, affecting uh, on the basis of the gender. So it is uh, these two questions perfect. I have. No, perfect. I think it's very important. Um, it's important when we... Uh, First of all, I would like I didn't mention in what I, I work at my job. I work in WFP in World, Econo World uh, Food Program. And uh, my job, my, my main job is to support countries around the world to create sustainable policies to fight hunger and to fight extreme poverty. So what I do is to work uh, with African countries, with countries in Bangladesh, in Myanmar, Nepal, in, in, your, in your region, you know the problems. So I went there several times and we see uh, the problems that they are facing. Uh, in Africa, and these countries that I visited, uh, if we don't uh, uh, try to show that they have different problems, and one of them is cultural, and the second is uh, about religion. Religion is a very uh, huge problem because uh, uh, sometimes they they don't allow the women uh, to to uh, to be in the in the front of these measures because they think that women cannot lead blah 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 because of religion. Okay, so this is something that we face in some countries around the world and with different religions, but the, almost all of them, women, they suffer so much. So we need to show them that it's an economic problem. If we, we don't put the women in front of these policies, we will never um, uh, achieve the solutions that we need to achieve. And so we need to uh, meet, uh, be more inclusive and to put the yes. gender balance in, in front of this. And uh, this, the, the, the question that you made more specifically, uh, I don't know because I, I, I went to India just twice in my life for a few days. So I, I, I don't know uh, the India situation. Uh, uh, so, uh, but here in Brazil, I could mention uh, about uh, this uh, poverty lines and the poverty studies about poverty situation, about deprivation. Here in Brazil is quite different because the problem of Brazil is the access to food. The people they don't have, they, they don't receive enough amount of salaries to uh, have a healthy food for them and their families. So the problem of Brazil is to access to food. It's not a problem that we are facing in Sudan, like uh, they don't have food. You know, the problem is not access. They don't have food at all for everybody. Even the, people, the rich people, they need to import food for the country. And of course, the poor people, they cannot do that. So this is another concept and another problem that we need to face with different solutions. 
Okay, different problems, different solutions. We cannot use the same solutions for all. We need yes, to, to face the problem of each country, of each region, and try to understand this, uh, what would be the best solution for that. So uh, this is what we uh, face in the world. What I see is when we show to the uh, government, when we show to the government that it's important to invest in social policies, when we make social policies is to invest in education. Education is a social policy because when you invest in, in, the, in education, you are investing in people, you are investing in the future of the country. So it's a social uh, uh, policy. So uh, they don't understand and they think it's just, uh, just to give food. Give food. It's important because you maintain the people alive, but you don't solve the problem because you can give food now, you can give food at night, you can give food the other day, the other day, the other day, and you don't give a citizenship to that person, to that people that should be uh, 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 inside the, 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 the citizenship producing. And most of these people, they wanna be included. So our speech is to include more people, to put these people, okay, to produce and to change the world. And it's possible. It's possible even with your country that has more than 1 billion inhabitants. I know the problems that you are facing, uh, but it's possible. Brazil has 220 million. And we have, I believe, the same, uh, the, we are the largest, but it's, it's, so I, I can imagine what you face in, in, your, in your country I'm with sure. the population. But it's possible if you, the government, start to invest in social policy. I received uh, delegations from India government and some uh, regions from India here uh, to, to think about school feeding. You have a very important number of kids in the school. Yes. Let's start yes. feeding all the kids yes. in all the public schools in the country. If we do yes. that, yes. then linking this food, you, 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 you can purchase the food from the smallholder farmers that will produce the food in the country. So you will increase the, 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 these, uh, the, the amount of money that will go to smallholder farmers and you have all the kids feed in the schools. I know that school. you have yes. almost yes, 8, 800 have. million, or five, it's in the number is yes. 500 yes. million. So it's a very uh, large number, but it's possible if we work in this direction, if we, we have political will. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question is that, uh, what is the reason behind Africa's severe poverty? Africa. Please repeat. I didn't, I uh, why, repeat. why Africa is suffering from severe poverty? Some yes, Africa, Africa. Yes, yes. The problem of Africa is, uh, is a problem of colonialism. What happened? Africans, they use it to live uh, in their ways. Everybody, okay, they have their ways of living. Uh, so in the uh, 14th century, they started the navigation. You know this, the history, okay? And the countries started to be uh, the Brazil. Brazil, we have the slavery. They went to Africa, the, the, the Portuguese, they went to Africa and they brought to Brazil almost 10 million. Uh, 10, can you imagine? 10 million Africans they brought from Africa to is, be slaves here in Brazil. So, uh, and they started Portugal, Great Britain, uh, France, Belgium, okay, all of them, they started to take the, 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 the African communities for them. So the colonialism, and they use it to take all the wealth, the gold, the minerals for Europe, for other countries. And when in the 60s and 50s of last century, African continent decided to become independent, what happened? 
they became independent, but the, the colonialism continued uh, through uh, some uh, government that they used it to support and put in some areas. So the history of Africa is terrible. They are, uh, they suffered so much, okay? Uh, uh, what we need nowadays, I believe that this is the moment because now we have very good African governments, very good people, they use it to study, they went to other countries to study, they created universities, African universities, they now understand the importance to invest in social policies, and they are increasing, they are organizing, but they, this takes time. As you can imagine, all the African countries, they became uh, uh, free in the 1970s. So it's uh, 50 years ago. It's, yeah. uh, they didn't have time to reorganize. And uh, even after the, 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 they, they became the independence, they had a lot of problems. We, we still have countries in Africa. They are paying tributes to the to the to the country in Europe to become independent, they continue paying. You can imagine this. So you are a slave, you become independent, and you pay for the person that took to slavery. So it's something that uh, that's why what we need to do the countries the 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 more the rich countries in the world they need to forgive all the the this this uh, the, the 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 this penalties and the problems that the, the the African countries they have and in the 80s of last century they received missions from the World Bank and IMF saying that they should create the liberal economies, blah, 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 blah. The, the Washington consensus that you know more than me, you, you, you studied, and it was a nightmare for them because they were not prepared for that. So destroyed the African economy. And even in the last of last century, Africa used it to receive food from other countries and it destroyed the producers of food. So imagine I produce rice, okay? I produce rice and then uh, uh, some government decided to donate rice for free. So the price of my rice, <laughs> who uh, would uh, purchase my rice? Who would buy my rice? So I, I give up, I, I, I escape from my land. And of course, the conflict, the conflicts that they face you know the countries that they they are continue to uh, uh, with conflicts in terms of uh, I, I believe that the the greatest problem now is about religion all the time killing in name of God I don't like this <laughs> I think this is craziness that we continue to kill people in the name of God no matter the name of God that we use so it's it's a nonsense. So they continue and uh, it's a problem. But I believe, I strongly believe that they will uh, uh, find their way and we will support them to find their ways. And they will uh, achieve and to find to, I, uh, just for the, the next uh, uh, 10 years, we are waiting a middle class in Africa of around 1 billion people. So they are achieving the middle class because they are uh, changing their lives. And this is very important. So Im imagine uh, a class of 1 billion people in middle class is the class that consume, that purchase goods. So you have a market. So the, I believe they will find their way. Definitely, sir. And it's so great to be in touch uh, with you. You are such a person that who has uh, the ground level reality work experience as well as you are in policy. So that's amazing. Yeah. So I would like to thank you. We do not have any other question in chat box. So I once again, uh, yeah, yes, please. Uh, you just need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much for such an uh, 
excellent lecture and talk. I really enjoyed it. I'm sorry I joined late, uh, but I would like to ask one question. Uh, I have been to, uh, you know, when you talked, you asked a question about Africa and I was in uh, China two, three years back and there was a group of students from Botswana and I was there for a teaching assignment and I was, you know, very glad to see around 10 to 12 uh, students from Botswana to China. So I asked them, what are you guys doing here? Like, you know, because they were the only one I could interact with in English because everybody else was speaking in Mandarin. So I got really excited. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine they said we are here sent by our government and free of cost to learn Chinese? You know, so you were talking about colonialism. So I was just wondering, is it a new colonialism in the term of, you know, uh, how China is bringing us people, students to, you know, from poorer countries to teach their own language. So that's what I was wondering was like a comment mm -hmm. and, you know, what does uh, Daniel's thought is. So thank you. Thank you, Ka Kaura. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I got late uh, with a different time. Though I'm here in California. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Thank you, Kara. Uh, yes, it, you are completely right. If you will go to Africa, you see the monuments, the buildings. All of them, they are constructed by uh, Chinese companies. Uh, what China is doing? Of course, it's a, it's a touch. China, they they have their. Uh, 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 their instruments, the, what they want to do. Uh, they, are, they are even uh, purchasing land in Africa to produce food for Chinese. It's not for, for, for the countries in Africa. So this is a problem. But uh, what uh, uh, Africans they are doing? They are trying to use the moment, uh, even this group from Botswana, they are learning. They are learning because they went to China to learn something. Okay, and they are learning, they will return. And that, that's, I, I said, uh, uh, education, you cannot refuse any kind of education. If India would do the same, saying, oh, uh, let, let's go, let's pay for 20 students from uh, Rwanda to come to India and learn about uh, social policies, they would do the same. I think they are doing the correct, what they need to understand is that they cannot uh, allow a new colonialism, as you said. They need to understand that they need to return to their countries and try to construct a new society, a new development society. And I believe that's what they are doing. Of course, the Chinese money is important. They have funds, they have money, and, uh, and they are constructing a lot of buildings, even uh, a lot of buildings, a lot of monuments, a lot of uh, hospitals, and you know, in, in several uh, 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 African countries. And of course, the African countries, they need this, they cannot say, no, I don't want, I, I want, um, but it's important for them to uh, show the limits. Okay, okay, I, I want your support, I know, I know I want everything, but here is uh, 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 my country and my people and I decide the future of my country. That's what they need to put these limits. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And I also Thank want you. to a little bit what you just mentioned. You could see, you could sense a little bit of segregation, racism, uh, you know, in, um, in when I was there in Harbin, it was really uh, shocking to see too, you know, the Chinese students and students from Botswana. So yes, of course, of course, because we have different cultures. They, they are really the 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 disconstructions in in, in Africa. Uh, the Chinese they don't go just the, with the money, but they go with Chinese. The Chinese work in the constructions. They don't hire people from the country to to work in the construction. So they live in a in a kind of segregation among them. And of course, this is a problem. And the, the, the segregation uh, that uh, the, the Africans used it to have in the past, life in South Africa, in Namibia, and other countries. So this is something uh, terrible, terrible uh, to 
see what happened. And nowadays, I believe that they understood uh, with the past that they cannot make the same mistakes. So I, I strongly believe and in uh, the uh, Africans, they are now well educated, uh, they studied more, and they know what they want. They know where they want to, what they want to achieve, where they want to go. So I strongly believe in, in, in their future. Thank you so much for your light. Thank you, both Thank of you. you. And uh, our students has, Roshan has one observation uh, that why this learning of language can't be seen as an event of globalization? Why you want to call it colonization? This question is for me or for Cora? Oh, uh, for both of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think that, uh, of course, uh, the Chinese, you know that the Chinese, they refuse to speak English. They, because of, <laughs> they don't speak English at all. When I went there, they don't speak English. They speak uh, Mandarin. I, they said, oh, you can speak Portuguese and we translate. Okay, they have the translation. This is something very cultural for them. Uh, if you know, if, I like to, that, that's why I like, uh, I love history. I like, I love to, to learn the history of the continents of the countries. If you learned the, the Chinese history, you will see that China was even in all the, 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 the moments of the world, China was one of the leaders of this world and they have a great culture and they suffered so much with the invasion of uh, Japan, the Japanese during the second world war. This is something that this, uh, they, they, they <laughs> never as accept what happened that, uh, the, during that time. So uh, this is something that they are trying now the Chinese, they have, they, they are the greatest world population, the greatest economy, almost the greatest economy in the world. Okay. Uh, and I believe in 10 years they will be. Okay. They have the, the, the leadership of, of the region. They are organizing uh, the new road. If you study the new road for, for uh, the Chinese goods, and they are now using the yuan, the Hemimbi, Hemimbi uh, yuan uh, for uh, the currency. They are not allowing the dollar. So this is a who studies economy say, knows that this is a huge problem for US <laughs> and uh, the future of the, 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 the region in terms of uh, what will happen in the road in the future. So the Chinese, they will be a very important uh, country, uh, one of the leaders of the world. And what they are doing in, in, in Africa, they are occupying a, an empty space. The Africans, they, the people forget, forgot about Africa in the past, even, even US. You don't see U.S. supporting so much the African continent. Brazil started to support, but nowadays China leads the support to the countries in Africa. And uh, this took for them a very importance in United Nations. The agencies of United Nations that where you have both, they want the FAO. The FAO leader, leader nowadays is a Chinese, and it was voted by Africa. So Africa has put the Chinese as leader in, in, in FAO. So this is, this is a diplomacy, role diplomacy. I think we, what we need to do is to play this, this game with them. And uh, of course, uh, always remembering about our populations, about the population of our countries. We have the BRICS. Okay, in the future, I still consider it's important. If you have Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa together, oh, it would be the greatest, the greatest economy 
and the greatest empowerment of uh, a group of countries in the world, just five countries. So uh, this is something that these countries could, should remain. And now they created uh, a new development bank, a bank to support the, these countries. We have a bank with India and China and Russia, they call it the new development bank. It's one of the greatest bank and nowadays it has more, more, more money than the World Bank. That's something that we need to, to, to take in, in, in our, in our, in our uh, view. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have already uh, crossed our stipulated uh, timing for this lesson. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Daniel for your extended enlightening discussions after your lecture and I would like to thank all the participants for making this discussion more enriching for all of us we uh, got to know many things and definitely we believe that uh, uh, this connection would remain and we will be connected and uh, maybe maybe some days we can do some kind of future collaborative work with uh, you on this aspect of hunger and poverty. Thank you all. Thank you all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. I'm, I'm at their, all, your disposal. Anytime you need, thank you. just invite me. I will be there with you. Okay? Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you so my much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to just say one thing. Thank yes, you, please. Daniel. And I think uh, I'm going to invite you ASAP at California <laughs> State University. <Okay>. This was really <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, Karen. Bye. bye bye, people. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.